Good morning, painters from the patio in Colorado. Hope you are doing well for this another show, Friday morning, 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time for uh, Learning Plain Air Live. And uh, we're here every Friday to help you become you know, better plain air landscape oil painters, help you get inspired, educated, motivated, all of us together on this plain air journey. And uh, so again, welcome, and uh, hopefully you can see everything. The light is, it's another sunny Bluebird Colorado day, but uh, we've got clouds and stuff, and so we'll see how things go here. Hopefully you can see everything. But uh, so today we are going to paint this beautiful roses and uh, sparkling apple grape. It looks like a wine bottle, uh, kind of still life. And we're gonna use the tips and techniques along the way to help us become better pl plain air landscape oil painters. All right, so uh, I wanna show you the painting that we did last week. And if you saw that video, if not, you can watch it on replay, but we talked about contrast last week and how we want to avoid making, you know, uninteresting, boring paintings and how we can use different tips and techniques to create contrast. Here's how things finished out on it. Um, you know, I, I think what we did was my two favorite ways to create contrast in oil painting are changes in color and changes in temperature. So what we have are, we have complementary colors in this painting. We have oranges, you know, the grapefruit, the orange, the cantaloupe, and then we have violets up here. So complementary colors create interest and they create contrast in a painting. Contrast of light and shadow. Um, these shadows, you know, violet shadows and the oranges. Light, shadow, light, shadow. And so this is how things turned out. I, I would have loved to, to maybe had another pass at the, uh, the cantaloupe, but all in all, not bad, not bad. We had some, you know, watch that video on replay if you haven't seen it. Some real good tips and techniques on how to create contrast in your plein air landscape paintings. And uh, so if you're watching on replay, welcome. Feel free to skip around this video and watch other videos on landscape oil painting in Colorado. And uh, for just meeting, hey, my name's Terry. Obviously, my passion is plein air landscape oil painting. And uh, it's my job to, to kind of help you and encourage you along yours and my plein air journey. All right, so uh, if you're in the chat, just say a quick hello for me and I hope you can see everything. I'm just gonna leave the laptop the way it is and not mess with it. Um, you know, not too many oil painter YouTubers go live outside. It's kind of a new experiment here for me. So uh, right now we're under cloud. So let's just see how things go. Um, let's get into our tips and techniques. But first, the quote of the day. Mindset's very important for me. Uh, read a lot of Bible verses in the morning and, and just um, mantras and sayings and quotes to, to keep me in a positive mindset. So here it is. A work of art which did not begin in emotion is not art. A work of art which did not begin in emotion is not art. Paul Cezanne, one of the French Impressionists, famous French Impressionists. Uh, go look at his work. Just an amazing Impressionist painter. And so, you know, I guess, you know, make a statement. Do something bold, do something different, do something unique. You've, you've heard me talk about emotion in paintings before. And, you know, the reason I do that is that's what I try to do, create an impression, a memory and an emotion with my paintings. Uh, I paint an impressionism. So you don't have to, but you can still, you don't have to paint an impressionism, but you can still create an emotion. You can still paint from the heart, paint like you mean it and make a bold statement. All right. Okay, good. That's our quote of the week. All right, and uh, you know this live stream is brought to you by that annoying banner going across the bottom of the video. If you haven't yet watched that video, uh, Complete Guide to Planner Setup, grab it in the link below. I think you'll enjoy that. Uh, one of the better YouTube videos out there on getting started with Planner Setup and Supplies, I feel, quite honestly. And uh, let's get into our, our tips and let's get into painting here. And uh, let me get out of the way so you can see the painting and uh, we'll get rocking and rolling. So I'm just gonna dip into some some odorless terpenoid. Hey, Bob, what's going on, man? And uh, hey, Colorado Springs, good to have you guys. Uh, welcome. So we're just talking about tips and techniques for painting roses here on plein air. And uh, here's our first tip. Let's get let's get moving fast and furious here. I want to show you this. Um, it has to do with with the drawing and the measuring of objects. Okay, and this applies to outside when you're painting when you're painting trees and barns too. The way I did these shapes um, before I put color on was this. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. But that was my drawing. So if you know me, you know that the four P's are very important for me. Pieces, placement, proportion, perspective. So when I drew that vase, I want to make it look like a geometric shape. So I'm going to draw the top. Even though I can't see it, I'm going to draw it in. Draw the middle ellipse and the bottom ellipse. Try to get the right form and shape and do the same on the wine bottle. Now, what I did for measuring, here's a, here's a little hack, a little tip, trick for you. If you don't know this, this will help you. Um, a couple... 
live videos ago, we talked about why your paintings might be flat or boring. And it could be that you lack, you know, proper placement and proportion of your objects in your planar landscape painting. Okay. So what you want to do is what I did was I measured with my brush. So you can use your brush as a measuring tape. So have you ever done that? So you just, if you can see, you just hold it out toward the object, toward the vase on the table. And then I put my thumb, I put my thumb at the bottom of the vase and I use the top of the brush for the top of the vase. And I just measure the size of that vase. And then I take it over to the wine bottle and I do the same thing. And I can see that the wine bottle is about a third as high or, or larger than the vase. Okay. So when I paint things and I've got my proportions admittedly a little bit out of whack here in the painting because I got to move everything close to you and make it big so you can see. But that's how I did that. If you, and you can do the same thing when you're out measuring a barn compared to the car, the, the, the evergreen tree compared to, you know, the bush. And so that's just a little quick hack trip uh, trick with uh, measuring and getting your proportion and, and your placement, right? So everything has a perimeter, you know, in the painting and I place everything appropriately. Okay. I hope that helps. Tip number one, let's get into some painting here. And uh, we've got a live Q and A at the end. If you guys have questions, I mean, you can put them in there. I'll see them. I'll try to answer them, but uh, Hey, grab your coffee, grab your paintbrush and let's get going. All right. I'm going to work on that. Uh, I'm going to get that wine bottle in real quick just because it's just kind of, it's, it's my darkest dark pretty much. And I think it'll help me read all the other colors. So I've got some alizarin crimson and really just phthalo blue. It's kind of a, uh, again, I follow my ellipse lines here when I paint. It's kind of just a, uh, the other thing too, I forgot to mention, I'm sorry, is this center line. Okay. So draw, draw your axis or your center line through your shape. So if I had an apple here, I would draw the center line, the axis through the apple so that I can see the angles of everything too. So another measuring proportion trick there, okay? But let's just get this alizarin crimson in right here with phthalo blue. And that's my label right there. So I'm gonna stop right there at the label. I'm just using a big number 12 brush. And then down here at the bottom, I just follow that shape right there on the bottom. And again, just some nice contrast of dark and light right there. We're not talking about contrast today, but I'll tell you what, um, I am always thinking about contrast, how I can create it, because contrast creates interesting paintings. So uh, hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're painting this weekend. Tell me what you're painting there in the comments if you are painting or maybe you're watching some YouTube videos. But uh, happy Friday. So let's, let's keep cruising here. I think when I did this part right here, okay, what I'd recommend is just that uh, – you just kind of, if you like impressionistic style, especially is just, just block that in really roughly, you know, and don't get too accurate about leaves. I started this. Uh, we got a lot more work to do here, but I'm going to paint this rose for us next as we talk about a couple more tips. Okay. So let's just go, let's get that label on. It's kind of bugging me. I want to finish this. Um, I didn't really mix up a color for the label, but it's, it's white, but it's catching some reflected light of some purples and just different different colors like that. So um, it's white, but it's also picking up color. You know what I mean? So I don't want to just use titanium white. So, but I am dipping into titanium white and a little ultramarine blue, a little red on my brush for some happy accidents there. Okay. So there's my label, you know, just the placement of that label. And I just want to kind of be accurate about my drawing. I want to follow the ellipse shape of the wine bottle to show proper perspective right there on the bottom see there there we go and then we can get fancy you know you know in the end we can kind of just go like like this this would be an accent calligraphy thing you would do at the end of the painting you want your darkest dark your lightest light and then any calligraphy so i could just go like this and just write in you know kind of the things on the label you know what i mean so there's actually a picture of like an apple right there on the label so i could just put that in real quick Okay, and then let's get to uh, let's get to this rose, and then I want to show you a little bit about the water stems and water, and kind of how we can do that. But uh, welcome again if you are just joining us. We are live, trying to become better planar painters and become inspired for planar landscape oil painting. So welcome. Um, let's go with this rose now. It's it's not terribly complicated to mix up the colors of roses, but you got to kind of dial it in correctly. It's it's all the light is coming from here. So a lot of this rose is in shadow. It's really just a lot of alizarin crimson and a little bit of cerulean blue to create that, that real deep red shadow color of the rose. So I always put the shadow in first 
Shadow does the heavy lifting. If you do the shadow right, the light is down. The light is just kind of the, the thing that gets all the credit. So let's just go ahead. I'm going to be very, very quick about it. Um, I'm just going to kind of follow the shape of that, of that rose sticking out there like that. And I'm really just going to kind of blend with my brush a little bit and just make broad, quick brush strokes like that for the shape of that rose. And I could go even just pure alizarin crimson because that's turned out to be just a little too, a little too purple color for me, but um, there. So see how that establishes kind of that right there, that shape. And let's go on to the next tip here um, for, you know, just basically impressionistic roses is what we're talking about. And uh, it's basically this, that every shape is going to have three things. Okay. So every shape you paint, whether it be a barn, a car, a person, <laughs> it's going to have basically at the very least three things. It's going to have a warm, a midtone, and a cool. So well, let's just look at, at this group of roses. And I see them as a group, you know, right over there. It's going to have a warm, a midtone, and a cool. So I want to make sure that this rose has a warm, a midtone, and a cool. Right now I've got my cool. I don't really have my midtone, but um, I can put that in next with pure cad red. So I might just dip into pure cad red and maybe a touch of a lizard and crimson. These roses are just a beautiful, beautiful you know, just deep color, but I'm, I'm squinting my eyes and I'm not trying to paint rose petals, right? I'm just, I'm putting the color of the rose in there. And you can see what I just meant by um, that the, uh, the shadows do the heavy lifting and the light gets all the credit because now we're seeing, we're seeing kind of this gorgeous light, you know, just kind of appear on these roses. I should probably use a smaller brush, but it's okay. I'm using a big number 12. And you can kind of see this rose slowly just start to start to appear and light is hitting it right here just very brilliantly right there so i want to i want to denote that right there all right here's another tip or trick for you you know me i'm not into rules too much but here's here's a general rule for you that'll help you warm light cool shadows so when the light is warm like a day like today you're always going to have cool shadows so the shadows will always be cooler than everything in the light. So that might help you, if you haven't heard of that, make sense of your light and shadow. The opposite is true. On a rainy day when there's some light and some sun coming out, but it's rainy and cloudy and cool, when the light is cool, the shadows are warm. So keep that little trick in mind. It might help you keep it in your back pocket. Um, let's do, the light is shifting, but let's just go ahead and kind of find some, some highlights here on this rose petal. I'm just going to dip in just a little bit of titanium white, but not much. And maybe even just a little bit of a little bit of orange, cat orange, just to show kind of spots on the rose where it's translucent, you know, and the light is kind of coming in and just a different color, you know. And I can just follow the general shape of the rose petals, but I don't want to paint rose petals. I'm just painting the light on on the roses, you know. And then I think we'll just kind of go like that. Just a deeper red, a richer red at the base of these that I may have lost. So we'll just go like that. And if you have some happy accidents like I just did there, it's cool. It's okay. Just let it happen. So that's just a very quick, you know, two or three minutes. And we've got the beginnings. We've got the beginnings of a rose. But more so, I just want to teach you my painting technique of what how I think and process as I go from piece to piece, you know? So um, I don't know if we need to really do too much here. I mean, the way I, the way I would do that when you're just starting out is just a mixture of ultramarine blue, cad yellow, and a little bit of red, alizarin or permanent rose or cad red, and get this deep, rich, dark green color and just make it, just make it impressionistic, you know? Like just, it's just a shape, you know? Just make this kind of, just block it in with these dark rich colors and then do the same thing put the highlights put the highlights on there afterward you know so that's kind of what i did with that this is just a shape it's just all cool and then i can come in and i can warm it up using the same pile with some with some red and some yellow and some orange 
we got a hummingbird cruising by there. And then you can just kind of find here some different colors, values of the leaves. Okay. And then leave, you can do the pop of the, the sunlight hitting those leaves right here. Let's go on to uh, work on this real quick. Very, very tricky to do water. Uh, I think we lost some light. I don't know if you can, if you can see, hope you can still see. It looks a little dark, um, but you can still hear me talking. This, the sun just went behind the clouds, but it'll come out again here. But, you know, just tell yourself you're not painting water is kind of my biggest suggestion. So I'm going to mix up a gray puddle. We've got some harmony in this painting of complementary colors, red and green. So I'm going to keep it when I make the gray of the glass. Okay. And the glass, I'm not painting glass. I'm not painting water. I'm painting the colors that reflect and refract through there. And at the top of the vase, I'm really seeing some phthalo blue, like this translucent blue color, gray color right there. That's pretty close, you know, right there. So what I'm going to do when you paint a vase or when you paint glass, you really just, it's like a kaleidoscope. You're really just putting the right color value and temperature in different little quadrants and pieces of the glass because it, it depends on what's around it and what's reflecting through it. You know what I mean? The background, what's behind it, the light and, and set it. So right here, whoops, <laughs> whoopsie, happy accident there. So right here is very cool color. And I want to kind of follow the shape of that, that vase right there. Okay, and then in the center of it, we have the background color of the tablecloth. So it's just going to be, you know, a lighter gray. And I used red and green to mix up my gray. So the color of my vase is kind of this, this gray, grayish green color. So right here is just another quadrant of reflected, ref refracted light. And I just want to show that right there. Okay. And then it's brighter in the bottom. I'm gonna use that same gray color and have a little bit of a cooler yellow, a cad yellow light into that gray color. And down here when the sun's out, the water, the vase color is more, it's, it's brighter, you know what I mean? It's brighter. And now watch, I'll put the water line and it'll make more sense to you, but I'm just not trying to paint a vase, I'm trying to paint the colors in the vase and get the right color value and temperature. And then it's going to look like, it's going to look like a vase. I hope we'll see. And again, just use that ellipse down on the bottom. We have some shadows, so I'll leave that. And then we've got reflected light right here. So watch this. I'm going to take my palette knife on the vase right there. We've got this reflected light from the from the sky. It's, it's a cerulean blue. A titanium white, a little bit of red maybe, and I'll just see if I can nail it on the first pass, but uh, I don't think I'll be able to do it, but let's just see if I can. But I'm just going to use my palette knife to show you real quickly, like right here. You know, see that? Just go like nice and light and just go down, just like that. And we have some, I think it needs a little more blue, a little more cerulean, but that's the sky reflecting off the glass right there so you want to show that as well um okay let's keep cruising here again if you're joining us we are live can you guys see did it just get like real dark or can you see throw that in there all right so i mix three puddles of chromatic black with white to get the different values then i color as needed yes 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 that's a good way to paint so if you understand what he just said was that he, he starts his puddles with gray and then adjust the colors as needed and that's a that's a good way to do it too you know it really is that's a smart way to do it because you can create harmony in your painting so i love that idea adobe pueblo setting yeah colorado springs so you're from colorado springs yeah i lived in cast rock for a while love the springs um just beautiful beautiful place you got woodland park just up above you but uh hope you can still see it just seems seems like the screen is dark but just just listen to what i'm saying we got some valuable information here and uh, let's go on to point tip number three here as we're painting. But I'm going to do the I'm going to put the water line in and the stems and this will start making a little bit more sense. And so I'm just going to use some. I'm just going to use a little bit of uh, cobalt blue and just kind of follow this water line like right there. And then it just kind of makes a little bit more sense. And then I got to paint the ellipse. I can see the water line go around the other side of the vase and I got to put that in. 
So right here, put that other, keep that ellipse in there. And then the water in the ellipse is a different color. I didn't really get that the first time, but I could try to, there's a little green in there, a little more red maybe. But the water, the water sitting there on top of the surface is just a little bit, it's got tinges of red in it. So I just put that in there, right there. And we can adjust that. And actually there's a leaf that fell into the water. So if we wanted to, I could put that there like that. So you see how we're basically just taking big pieces and and we're painting smaller. We're taking piece, big pieces and painting smaller. We're painting thin to thick. And that's all I'm really doing. So let's put a couple stems in as we talk about tip number three here is, is I've already kind of alluded to it is don't don't paint. Uh, yeah, pretty dark. Sorry, it's yeah, the clouds and stuff here. Let me see if I can I can make an adjustment there. I've got an umbrella up over there that if I remove it, it might help. But uh, but basically, tip number three here is you know is is don't paint things by name and don't paint roses. You may have heard that, but I don't, I don't think you can hear it enough. And so um, what I do is my only concern is as I've said, an impression, contrast, and interest. That's all I'm concerned about in my paintings. And so in the beginning. Just blur things, keep things in two-dimensional flat shapes, and then model later on as you go, you know? And I spend 70 to 80% of my painting uh, searching for the right color value and temperature, almost the whole painting. It stays messy until the very end per on purpose. And, uh, and that's so that I can dial in the right color, the right value, and the right temperature. Give the sun peeking out again. So there you go. Sorry, you can see now. Probably a little bit better. But... Uh, you know, excellent color approach. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate that. Paint shapes. Yeah, you're painting shapes. That's really your job. Your job is not to paint a bouquet of roses. Your job is to put the right color value and temperature inside the right shape, but also to get your proportions, placement, and shapes correct. And that's why we talked about the measuring and the sizing and the perimeter and the boundary of everything. So when you're out painting barns and adobe buildings or, uh, you know, the mountains and the springs is you got to keep all those things in mind. Um, so let's just do a stem or two and things will kind of make a little more sense here with this, with this, uh, and, and you've got, you got stems above water and stems below water. So I'm wondering if you know what we could do to make things look a little bit more realistic under the water. I've got an idea in mind. If you know, put it in the comment there, but uh, I've got one idea we can do for sure. Um, I mean, it's not about tricks like that, but you got to just paint what you see. And, and I see some, some different things below the water. And we have all these dark, really dark stems in here going up, you know, so we'll just kind of get those in real quick up to our beautiful roses. Some of those are different colors, but below it's really catching the light travels through the water. So you have different things going on. It's kind of tricky. I don't want to get into it too much in this video, but one thing you can do is we've got some real, okay, here's what I'm going to do. Put the shadow color in first of these stems going down like that. Put the shadow color in. They crisscross. Don't make them uniform. Don't make like five stems all spaced apart because that, that's just not how they appear. And then what I can do is you, can, you can't see it probably because of the laptop, but I'm mixing up cad yellow light and I'm mixing up uh, some phthalo green or some kind of blue to get this powerful. Because of the way the light is hitting through the water, we've got this powerful pack of color on the stems under the water like that, that I just want to kind of show like that. And so that's one thing. The other thing we can do underwater that I was thinking of is uh, exactly fuzzy line. You got it. That's what I was thinking was you could take your brush instead of just having hard edges on every single stem is you just kind of blur a little bit, just do a little blur here and there, you know, just kind of little, little brush marks to blur things up a little bit. And that's a good way to, to show that underwater look. I need a darker line for my water line. I'm just going to go into pure, <laughs> pure ultramarine blue just to show you, even though my color's off there, I'll make it a little more gray right here. But that last point is important. What I was talking about is, is spend the majority of your painting just searching for the right sh value, shape, and color. And that'll really help you in your paintings, I think. And uh, don't paint things by name. Um, 
and basically let's see what else we can do here kind of respect your time and finish up here but uh let's go with uh i mean we can hit a couple more little highlights on the leaves knowing that the the light is coming from left to right just to kind of show some definition in here quick broad brush strokes that looks really 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 beautiful i just love that color it's just like sunlight on your brush right and don't overdo it but just look and see where there's opportunities to do that on the leaves and then there's other things we could do in here of course you know what we want to do lastly is just show the stems up top here they're a little bit in shadow because of the petals you know so i'm going to dip into some some cad orange and they're just a cooler the stem is just a little bit cooler maybe even permanent rose into my green mixture and then just kind of show show that stem come down like that but there's really some orange on those stems that they're very cool so i'm just going to show that briefly like that and then importantly under the under the roses you got to get that those leaves and those stems it's a very, very cool color, cad yellow, phthalo green, titanium white, you know, stuff like that. And then just, just kind of punch it like that a little bit to show that's a little too yellow. I know you're, the sun's back out so you can kind of see, but I'm just trying to work on these to give a little more definition to these roses under the, the stems like that. So a um, little bit of, cad yellow light like that and see i just go i just go quick and impressionistically that's what i do and then of course we could we could define that didn't get as far as i would like on that rose but certainly we can use different kinds of reds you know in here to show the light coming down and just hitting hitting that rose and just kind of just showing hints of the petal inside you've got some cool reflected light inside as well so um kind of didn't do much in the background didn't get as far as i would like on all of this stuff but uh let's just kind of put a couple more brilliant colors there under the water on the stems and what i'll do is i'll finish this up uh today or tomorrow and we'll show you next week what we ended up with but i think that's a good way to go Remember your darks underneath your objects here, um, and that's a good good way to a good place to stop. If you got questions, fire away or comments. Go ahead. Appreciate you guys joining in, and uh, you know we had a we had a question from a subscriber that you know I'll just mention it because maybe maybe a lot of people struggle too. Is when you're out painting a plein air landscape, um, it can be difficult to to um, make sense of all all the shapes and everything that's out there and all the pieces, and so that's why. If you haven't watched it yet, I've also got a, a free unlisted YouTube video on that, on the drawing stage of my plein air painting technique, is the pieces component, okay? So you just have to squint, and you gotta, you got to divide the complex landscape into three to five simple large pieces that you can work with to start with, and then you, then you model and form and get the smaller pieces within the pieces as you go. So if you're looking out at a plein air landscape, you got to make your composition simple. Simple is better. Don't don't paint the whole you know state. Don't put everything in your painting, and uh, and then just start off with those three to five simple pieces. You know, so uh, okay. So having lived in Taos for many years, went through all of the art galleries, which created my interest in painting. Tell you what, yeah. If you want a good point, if you want to get inspired, uh, go to uh, go to Santa Fe, New Mexico, because I think per capita. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think other than New York City and maybe California, it's one of the top three art meccas. Of the United States, and I've been to Santa Fe before. I've I've not been to Taos. Um, I'd love to go there, but I mean, you think of George O'Keefe. I mean, many famous artists come from New Mexico. The air, the light there is just beautiful, and uh, that's a great place to go and get inspired. If you want to get inspired, just take a trip to New Mexico, to either to Taos or or to uh, Santa Fe, and check out the art galleries. But yeah, great point. And uh, so yeah, I hope you guys are staying inspired with your plein air paintings and. Bob, you said refraction. Exactly. I mean, we were talking about the stems and you just got to kind of not overthink it when it comes to painting the glass and the water. I didn't spend as much time, but next week, hopefully I can show you a little bit better finished technique 
but just some thought processes on how I view color and my painting process. And so I just want to review real quick that every, every piece is going to have a warm, a cool, and a mid-tone. And so just keep that in mind if you want your stuff to, to look realistic, and that'll help you. And then just spend most of your painting technique finding those, those color values and temperatures in the right shape, and that'll really help you, I think. So um, I'll tell you what, any other comments or questions, let me know, but I'll respect your time. We're at about a half hour there. So uh, well, I'll put this next video up. Watch it next on, um, you know, before you oil paint trees, I believe it's called. Before you oil paint trees, know this. A lot of the techniques that we're talking about here in that video, just a lot of really power pack techniques on my thought process and how to paint greens and trees. So I'll put that up there. I'll see you over there in that next video. God bless you guys. Have a good rest of your week. Have a good weekend. And uh, we'll see you up in the mountains. Or I'll see you next Friday here on the patio. Take care. God bless. Thanks. Thanks for joining.